Hi guys, welcome to my channel. So I haven't filmed in what feels like forever and I was sick for a really long time with all different kinds of health issues going on but now I'm better for now and I, so I decided to film. I already feel rusty and I already feel like I'm going to be stumbling all over my words but I decided to do a get ready with me and I thought it would be fun because I'm going to be trying out new products and they're not necessarily like new products to like makeup but just new products to my collection makeup products that I've seen um, like for example this is the um, Lorac tantalizer and I saw this at um, TJ Maxx and so it's just products some of them are from TJ Maxx some of them are from Sephora and it's just new products that are new to my collection and I figured it'd be fun just because a lot of these um, can be considered oldie but goodies to some people but maybe people don't talk about them anymore so I figured out it would be I figured it would be helpful to try them out and let you guys know my thoughts on them just because they're already well-known products so let's dive right into it. I already have my face moisturized. I already put on the Versali um, Rose Gold Elixir Drops and these have been kind of soaking into my skin for a while. So I'm just showing that I already prepped my skin with that and that it's not a new product to my collection, but I do really enjoy them and they smell delicious. Okay, there, I fixed the angle of the camera, so hopefully it's better while filming. So I already have my skin prepped with that. Now I'm going to go in with the Dr. Brandt Pores No More Primer. I've heard so many good things about this. I've already tried it. Let me think. I've tried it twice. And one time I tried it, I didn't wear any makeup. I just put it on right here where my large pores are on my face. And I just wanted to see if it blurred my skin and looked nice without wearing makeup. And it did. It just made my skin look a little bit smoother and I didn't put anything on top. Um, I'm not sure how long it lasted like that. I didn't really pay attention. Um, since it was a no makeup day, I wasn't really like checking on my makeup or anything. But um, I feel like it does fill in the pores. Um, the other time I tried it, it was with makeup. I feel like I got slightly oily on my uh, T-zone a little bit faster, but I just kind of bl uh, blotted it with some powder and it looked really nice um, with just that. So I feel like I do like this primer and I'm going to continue to play with it and try it out. So I'm just kind of like pushing it in and spreading it over just my large pores right here. The other primer I have is a sample as well. There is quite a few samples in this video. This is the Velvet Touch Primer by Hap Haponesque. And it just says to smooth and prime the complexion. I'm not sure the consistency of this. So, um, see it's not even opened yet. So I'm going to try it out. If it's more of a silicone consistency, I don't really like those kind of primers that much. So I'm just going to put a little bit on my nose and my chin because I do have pores there and let it just kind of smooth my skin. But I'm not going to put it all over my face. I don't really like those kind of primers. So I don't know how often I'm going to actually use this one. But yeah, it feels silicone-y, but my skin does. My nose looks really, really smooth. So for face products, I have this. And this is an old product, and when I googled it, I'm pretty sure it's discontinued. But these are popping up at TJ Maxx stores. Mine was $5.99 for this product, and this is the... Oh, I've never even bought from this brand before. It's Bossier. But I've seen this brand at Sephora, and this is their BB cream. It says Light Broad Spectrum SPF 27. So that is their lighter coverage. I think there's a fuller coverage one. And it says self-adjusting um, shade. So I think it's a universal shade. And it's supposed to adjust to your skin tone. So that is really interesting because I'm a medium skin tone. And I have kind of like olive and neutral undertones. A lot of makeup looks really orangey on my skin. So I'm really curious to see what this looks like. The bottle is pretty big and it comes with 1.75 fluid ounces which is actually a lot for a face product a lot of um, foundations come with just like an ounce so it's a really thick cream and the only reason why I'm describing this is just in case you see this pop up at your store and you're curious about trying it out it's a really thick cream it looks really really light so we'll see when we blend this out how this looks on my skin I'm really curious to see um, I'm just gonna use a flat brush just because this is more of like a BB cream type of product so I, I don't think I need, whoa, that's really light. Let's see how self-adjusting this really is because that's 
I don't know. I'm looking like a ghost. This might be a trying out products fail video. I'm still going to post it anyways. I'm going to kind of pat it over where that primer is and then just kind of smooth it out. Um, patting and smoothing motions. It looks like it's warming a little bit up, but that is kind of pasty on my skin. Um, I'm going to give it a little bit more. And we'll see as we work it in if it starts to like melt into my skin and kind of blend into my skin tone. It looks like a nice like light coverage. It's just kind of evening out my skin tone. So if it was the right color, it would look nice. I don't know what you guys think on camera. It looks hideous and ghostly. In person, it's starting to self-adjust to my skin. But yeah, I'm looking in the camera right now and it looks pretty horrendous compared to my neck. Um, okay, so for concealer, I'm going to be testing out this, my nose itches. This is the Kevin Aquan um, Concealers. So I'm going to go in with the shade Light and that is going to be my concealer underneath my eye. It says the Aretheolist Super Natural Concealer and it says it's natural looking, high performance, light weight, brightening pearls, high definition pigments, antioxidants to blend correct, contour, blah, blah, blah. So it all sounds promising. Pretty much every brand promises like amazing things. So we'll see. The color looks nice, so we'll go in with this. I figured it'd be fun to use some samples just because these are not products that um, I'm like thinking about buying. So if I do end up loving it, that would be really cool. So usually I color correct my dark circles um, I'm not going to do that today just because I don't have a new color corrector to try out. So I'm just going in with a brush into this little sample of the Kevin Aquan Concealer in Light. It feels really, really creamy um, painting it on. Um, I don't know if it's because it's in a sample thing and not a tube where it's a little bit drier. I'm just going to go in with this brush. Actually, that blended out really easily. I hardly even blended and it just blended out. I'm going to go in. There's not much in the sample. I'm going to try to go in with a little bit more and put it on my eyelids as an eyeshadow base. Um, but that blended out really easily. I'm going to go into the shade medium and I'm going to try to put some of this on my face and see if ooh, the medium is really dark. I'm going to go in and put this on my face and see if we can kind of make my face look less scary. <laughs> it's really scary looking right now. I'm not sure if that messed up my face or, <laughs> or if it made it better. We will see once I'm all done and everything is evened out. I'm thinking it didn't really make it much better. But my face does feel like set. Like if that was my shade and you guys do, if you guys are fair skin tones and you see it at TJ Maxx, I feel like it's set where you wouldn't really have to set it unless you had oily skin. So I'm going to go in with some powder now. I'm going to set underneath my eyes and lightly set my face. This is not a new product. This is the Too Faced Born This Way uh Erythio powder, is that what it's called? This is so good, I really like this powder a lot. It has kind of like a yellowy tone to the powder so it doesn't look all flashbacky and it doesn't make me look ghosty or put like a white cast on my face, which I love. So I'm gonna just set my face with this quickly. It looks a little dry right here and a little cakey. And on my cheeks, they look a little dry too. So I'm gonna bronze the skin. I'm gonna go in with the Marc Jacobs Tantalizing Bronzer. This product is newer to my collection, but I couldn't wait to use it, so I've already tried it out a few times, and I really, really love it. The tone of it is beautiful. It is such a hyped up bronzer, so I was kind of wondering um, like how it was gonna live up to the expectation, but the only thing I gotta say is that all the YouTubers who have this from the first release say how good it smells. Mine doesn't smell good. It has a scent to it, but to me it doesn't smell like tropically. I almost feel like it smells like mature. So I'm not even sure if it's just mine or if it's a dud. I um, When I went into Sephora, it was sold out, so I didn't see a tester out. So I'm not sure if it's just mine or if maybe I just don't love the smell that it comes in and other people do, but if you do have this, let me know down below from this release, not from the old one, um, if yours smells tropically. Because to me, I was expecting it to smell like the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer, and it does not smell like that in the least bit. So 
Okay, so that looks a little bit better. I also have this Lorac Tantalizing Bronzer. Um, it's a baked bronzer, and this one is a glowy bronzer. I don't have glowy bronzers, so I was pretty intrigued by this. It just kind of swatches very sheer, but it is kind of like illuminating, so it looks pretty. So I just kind of want to put it over where I bronzed already and see if it kind of adds some luminosity to the skin. I'm super duper dry from that BB cream. I'm going to kind of put it on my cheekbones a little bit higher because, I mean, I don't mind having it as like a bronzy, br bronzy blush. I mean, I feel like it is a little illuminating, but I don't feel like it does much. Maybe that's why it's at TJ Maxx. I'm not sure if it's getting discontinued, but it just kind of looks like whatever. Shoot, I forgot that I had this and I already powdered. I grabbed a sample of the Marc Jacobs, um, what is it, like the... Dew Drops, and this is from the original um, release, the original shade, the lighter shade. This is not the newer, darker shade. Um, even though I already powdered, I've been wanting to use this so bad. It's very thick and gel-like. I'm going to just put a little bit on my cheekbones, and even though I already powdered, we'll see if it goes over the powder okay. You're not supposed to put cream products on top of powders, but since this is a nice high-end brand, we'll see if it, maybe it will be okay. I'm just trying to dab it on with my finger and blend it out with my finger. I feel like it's not going on that smooth, but that's because I already powdered. But that color is gorgeous. That is such a pretty highlighter. And when it blends out, it doesn't feel like creamy going over the powder. It doesn't feel like it's going to move around. It kind of feels like it's going to stay there. And it's really, really pretty. This is definitely something I would be interested in picking up the full size because that is so pretty. I have a little bit left on my finger, so I'm going to just dab it on my chin because I like my chin to look glowy. I'm like one of the few people that I highlight my chin more and not my uh, forehead. I feel like everyone highlights their forehead. So for highlighter, I have this sample. There's like, I should just call this like full face of samples almost. Um, I have two little um, samples of the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powders. I have their metallic strobe powders, but I have not tried their ambient lighting powders. So I'm really, really excited. I really want to try Dim Light because that's the one I plan on paying the money for a full size. So let's try out Dim Light. I'm not even sure how this is going to work. It's just like a sample on paper. So we'll see if we can get it onto the brush. I can put it on this little fan brush. This fan brush, I'm not sure if it's going to pick up enough product. I'm not even sure if it's going on just because that Marc Jacobs highlighter is so beautiful. See, my other highlighter brush recently broke and I was going to glue it back to the handle, but I haven't. So don't mind my brush. My brush is really sad, but the bristles on this pick up product really nicely. So I'm going to just use this to pick it up and we'll see if we can get some on the brush. I'm not even sure. Oh yeah, see, I hit pan. So there's obviously product on this brush, so I'll brush it on. This is supposed to be a very natural highlighter that you just like makes you look nice and glowy. Can you guys tell the difference? Let me know. I feel like it brought out the highlighter a little bit while setting it. I wanted to get this product just to basically dust all over my face as like to make my face look very glowy and healthy. I feel like I would like it if I bought the travel size of that. Spritz with some MAC Fix Plus. Just tasted it. Bring my face back to life a little bit from all those powders. And I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna quickly fill in my eyebrows. I do not have a new, um, eyebrow product to try out. So I'm just gonna quickly and very lazily fill in my eyebrows and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm done with my brows and I'm so mad at myself because I totally forgot that I've been saving this highlighter. I've only swatched it, but I have not put it on my face and I wanna put it on my face so, so bad. And I don't know how to say it, but I have the box right here. It came in this really cool, like triangle shaped box and it's their ombre highlighter. It is in the shade Kumadori Ombre highlighter that's what it's called and it's so pretty I've only swatched it and I want to use it so so bad so you guys can see it goes from darker to lighter right there so we're gonna put this bad boy on our face on my face just just cuz like I don't care that I already put a liquid highlighter and set it 
we are gonna put this bad boy on top because I've been waiting forever to try it out. So my camera stopped recording. Let's try this again. I was saying that it has a little bit of kick up on the pan. I don't know if you guys can see that, but watch this. I already did the other side of my camera stopped recording, but like look how smooth and beautiful that looks. Look at that. It looks so smooth and so pretty. Oh my goodness. And the color is really, really pretty too. Like, that is pretty. I'm obsessed. I'm in love. This is so smooth and beautiful looking. I just, I love it. So, let's go into eyes. I have a few palettes that I've been saving for a video like this, and I haven't touched them, but I've been dying to play with these palettes. So, the first one is the NYX Ultimate Shadow Palette, but this has so many gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous colors that I'm thinking of just doing a dedicated video to this. Maybe, like, a three looks, one palette type of video. Um, and then I also have my American Horror Stories. Uh, Fear has a face eyeshadow palette. I love American Horror Stories. So when I saw this at um, Hot Topic, I thought it was so pretty. I've swatched it a few times to try to get a feel for what kind of look I would want to do. But I haven't played with it yet. So the girl said that she liked her palette, the girl who worked there, and that it's pigmented. But I'm not really sure because everyone has their own kind of opinion on a pro products that they like, you know. And then I also have the Natasha Denona palette. It is so gorgeous. The Tropic palette. Um, I've swatched it. I think it's stunning. A lot of people have said that they don't care for it. Um... I think it's so pretty. And I was thinking about maybe doing a three looks, one palette with this too for, um anyone who has uh, like already purchased the palette and kind of don't know what to do with it since it has so many bold colors. I was thinking about doing that with this palette, so I'm not really sure. Um, I might do that with this palette. So I think I'm leaning more towards the American Horror Stories palette just because I've had it the longest and I haven't touched it yet, but it doesn't have mattes in it. So I may dip into the Natasha Denona palette for some mattes, but I do, um, I've never even used the Natasha Denona palette, so it'd be kind of like a double for some impressions. So let me look at this one. I think with the Natasha Denona palette, I'm just going to dive into this peach matte shade right here. It is called Pastel Melon, and I'm going to throw that in my crease just to lay down a base, and then we'll use the American Horror Story palette. Where's my brush cleaner? I'm going to apparently use my sweats because I can't find my color switch. Oh my gosh, a bobby pin literally just flew out of my hair. Alright, I zoomed you guys in. It was looking a little dark so I brightened it up. Hopefully the exposure is not too high. So I'm going to go into Pastel Melon, how I said, and I'm going to just run that through uh, the crease. And that way I can just have something laid down to have as a transition shade to get me going on the other palette. So I'm just going to kind of buff this around. That color is really pretty. It's like a nice light peachy color. Perfect for transition, but it's kind of bright at the same time. But let's dive a little bit into this American Horror Stories palette. It comes with this little um, brush that I've tried to use for swatches and it's not the greatest brush. But here's what the palette looks like. And all the names, like, if you can see, like, on the top, it has, like, from whatever season it was. And then it has little names pertaining to that season. My favorite, I really liked the Murder House one. I just got really into that one. So I'm going to dive into the Freak Show one. And I'm going to go into the green shade called Freak. And I'm going to be putting that on my brush. And I'm going to kind of run that um, lower in my crease. My camera stopped recording again! So I'm just putting it on the outer third of my eye and running it into the crease. It does have some pigment to it. I'm always kind of worried about buying makeup products from non-makeup stores, like if they're even going to work. But this one does have some pigment to it. And that is a cool color of green. It's not super pigmented, but it does have pigment to it. I am getting some fallout. Next I'm going in with this dark green shade called Witch in the Woods and I'm going to be putting this just on the very outer portion to bring some depth and I'm using this like little small Anastasia brush. Okay that one you probably need a sticky base because it's not really giving me a lot of pigment. I'm going to go in with this glittery black called Rubber Man. And I'm going to put a little bit of that like on my outer lash line. For Let's try the gray. The gray is called Supreme. That's obviously from the Coven one. So we'll go into Supreme and see what Supreme does. Kind of blending out a little bit better. 
So I do like the Supreme one. So I'm gonna clean it up with some concealer. I'm gonna go in with the brush that it came with. I'm gonna go in with some Maybelline Fit Me Concealer. I'm getting low look it. So I'm gonna put some of this on the lid and I'm gonna clean it up so I can put another color on the lid. This brush is actually a nice thin kind of semi, not stiff, but like it has some shape to it. So this is actually a nice brush to kind of clean up with concealer. So there, I cleaned it up a little bit. I feel like the camera is looking a little washed out. And I feel like I have some green tint going on right here. So definitely, definitely um, do your eyeshadow first and not your face. So we're going to go in with the icy pink one first and see how pink it is. It is very icy. This one is going on nice over the concealer. So I feel like all of these would look really good with a sticky base. So I probably shouldn't have set my eyelids. So now onto the lower lash line. I'm gonna go back into that green shade called Free and I'm gonna run it on the outer half. I've been dying to try out this one. This is called Lost Souls and it's a red with an orange shift in it. It's a really cool color. So I'm gonna put some of that on my inner lower lash line. It has pigment to it, but my eye looks kind of weird because it just has like this green tint all around it. Um, I think I'm done playing with it. Um, I don't even know on this side. <laughs> this side looks so much more clean and this one has like this weird green tint all around it. I think since this look is already a fail. I'm gonna just go in with other colors and do a similar eye, but with different colors. So I think that will be fun. So now let's just use the light blue. It is called Sanity and it's from the Silum one. I personally did not finish the Silum season. It was way too scary. I don't like anything about like being possessed and all of that. It freaks me out, so. I don't watch movies about like exorcisms and all of that kind of stuff. It just freaks me out. So I'm blending this into my crease and it's actually pigmented. Like it's showing up nicely. And I'm going to put this on my outer V as well. So now let's go on to the wings liner. So I started off with that glittery black shade called Rubber Man. And I'll... I'm gonna wing this out a little bit. So yeah, I think I'm just gonna go into this white shade and we'll see how this matte white shade, if it's pigmented or not. I love having white matte um, eyeshadows and palettes. So we'll see how this white shade performs. Yeah, it's pigmented. This one's a creamy pigmented matte. And so for the little pop on the inner tear duct, I'm gonna put the orange shade in Voodoo which was that really cool, um, one of the witches, she did voodoo. And she ended up appearing in one of the last ones too, as like a hotel guest. So there's that pop of colors. So the red and the orange are pigmented. All of these are pigmented. I'll do a recap at the end of the video, but let's zoom out and do the eyelashes. I feel like my eyes look like a hot mess. So I have two mascaras to try out. I have the Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara and the CoverGirl Clump Crusher Mascara. So I'm not sure which one to try out, but I'm leaning more towards the CoverGirl one. I'm going to kind of hurry because my battery is going to die and I don't want to run out of battery before I get to do the lips. So I'm going to quickly coat my lashes with some of this to give my first impressions. I like that the brush is separate from the bottle just so that way I could see. I found this at Marshalls for $3.49 and they had a ton of them at TJ Maxx. So let's go into this one. I like that the brush is curved. Okay guys, to finish off this hot mess of a look, I have only one new lip product that I haven't tried that I've been wanting to try out and it is the Anastasia Liquid Lipstick in the shade Rio. Um, quite a few of these products I ordered with an Ulta coupon and I used all my, I redeemed like all my points that I had. So I've been dying to try this out and I was kind of bummed because I saw this at TJ Maxx but I was like, well I use my points which is free but it sucks that it's at TJ Maxx for like seven bucks. A little backstory is that I've tried out a couple Anastasia Liquid Lipstick sticks and I love some and I hated one so I really hope this is part of the ones that I love 
Okay guys, so this is the final look. It's a little scary looking. I feel like I, I do. I look like a complete clown. Um, but this is a fail video and sometimes that happens and sometimes we play with our makeup and we don't like it and we don't like the way it comes out. Sometimes products don't work out for us when we're playing with them. So it's kind of nice to show you guys that on camera. Um, so let's quickly talk about the things that I liked and didn't like before my battery dies. The Anastasia liquid lipstick, starting off with that, it's beautiful. The color is everything and I can't wait to wear it this summer. It's so, so pretty. Um, now that I'm using a better mirror, I'm using my Marc Jacobs mirror and I'm not using the mirror from this palette. In the mirror from this palette, my eyeshadow looked somewhat okay, but now that I'm looking at it in the mirror, the white eyeshadow looks a little bit patchy and so does the blue eyeshadow. The green one actually looks nice and the pink one looks nice and the red and um, orange were somewhat pigmented. So I think all of these are semi-pigmented. Um, this was a, like a $10 to $12 palette. I know that BH Cosmetics sells really pigmented eyeshadows and stuff so there are better affordable options out there. Um, I mean you can buy single shadows for like 5 to $6 depending on the brand. Um, so I don't think I would recommend this. I think it's a nice collector's piece if you're really obsessed with the TV show, but other than that, I don't think it's a great palette and it was a dud for me personally. Um, I'm trying to think what else. The bronzer is beautiful, goes on smooth. I've used it a few times. I absolutely love it. I feel like the mascara, it looks okay. It's very separating. I do like the way it looks on my lower lash line. Um, I do have to try it out and see if it smudges or flakes on my lower lash line, but I think it's a great layering mascara and I am definitely going to continue to use it. This face product, the BB cream was horrendous looking on my skin and it feels really dry. So I think if you find it at TJ Maxx, if you are fair with oily skin, this is probably going to be a really good product for you. If you are a medium skin tone like me, I had to mix it to get it to look like this. Um, I am going to try it out one more time and wear it and see if it ever does adjust to my shade without me mixing it with something else. So I'll update you guys on that, but it is a fairly drying product. Um, the Dr. Brandt primer I really like and I'm going to continue to use it. Um, I do feel like it makes me a little bit oily, but once I powder it down, it looks beautiful again and I've worn it for like eight hours and my makeup looks nice and poreless. This Marc Jacobs, um, what is it called? The Coconut Highlighter. It's gorgeous. I definitely would consider buying the full size because it's just so, so pretty. And it doesn't feel sticky or like it will slide around on the skin. So I think it's a nice product to mix in with foundation, but also to wear as an actual actual highlighter, which I don't love liquid highlighters all the time, but that one is gorgeous. This highlighter, highly recommend, like look at that. It's so smooth looking and it's really, really beautiful and intense without causing my skin to look textured. The Lorac Tantalizing Bronzer, if you see it at uh, Marshalls or TJ Maxx, this one is in Golden Glow. It does bring some luminosity to luminosity to the skin. If you're darker than a medium skin tone, I don't feel like it's going to show up on you because it is such a light bronzer. They had a matte one, so I'm wondering if that one's better. This one um, is a little bit nice for a summer look, but you definitely have to layer it over your contour because it is so light and slightly sheer. So I also use the Kevin Aquan um, concealer, blended out flawlessly. Um, I wish that I didn't use it with this look actually because I would love to wear it out and see what it looks like. It looks very smooth on the skin and it blended out really nicely. But now my concealer is all stained from the eyeshadow so it doesn't even look as good as it did. But it was really, really pretty like going on before all this eyeshadow mess. The Ambient um, Hourglass Highlighting Powder in Dim, I definitely want to pick up the travel size. It just looks very illuminating on the skin and I think it's really pretty and I think I would really love it. Um, and I'm trying to think what else. The Anastasia lipstick I already mentioned. It's gorgeous. So I think that's all. If I forgot another product, um, please ask me about it down below so that way I can mention it. I basically want to go wash off my face now because I look like a clown. I did not try to make this makeup look bad, but for some reason I just came out looking like I've never done makeup a day in my life. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next video. I do videos twice a week and I am getting back on my normal schedule now. So I will see you guys then and until then, have a great day slash night everybody. Bye!